Welcome to episode five of the Science of Advertising Show, the show where we review the latest ads and the science behind why they influence and persuade human behavior. On today's panel, we've got Dr. Jared Cooney Horvath, the preeminent expert in the field of educational neuroscience with a focus on learning, memory, and attention, and your host, Jonathan Rowley. All right, on today's show, we are kicking off with a new ad from Industry Super. We're working on something bigger than we've ever done before. It's bigger than this and this and even this. We're creating over 200,000 jobs by investing in Australia. That'll help get our super and the economy growing again. And if you're with one of these, you're a big part of it. And I'll jump straight into this one. I simply love this creative for several reasons. It has a really relatively low production value. Um, and it's, it's on point when it comes to reminding and refreshing this brand's long-term branded assets. They know what they're doing. They know what their brand is and they continually invest in these assets. Even from the opening scene, you can set a, see it's a different setup to what many different ads are currently running um, on today's screen. So it, as a result, it gets your attention. Now, I'll loop back with you, Dr. Jared, on this, but the important thing to note about attention is once you have it, even once you've got it a little bit, you can form memories on the back end of it. You don't need more and more attention because more attention doesn't necessarily correlate with deeper memories. So Jared, just even there, can you jump in there and just share your thoughts on that? Yeah, we talk about that kind of stuff all the time where there's this mistaken belief that engagement or attention equals learning. And the two are very much not synonymous. Um, disengagement means no learning. So if you have no attention, you ain't gonna learn a thing. But once attention even mod just moderately ticks over, then you have the same potential to learn, to form a memory, as anyone else. So if you got me at a, say a scale of zero to 10 uh, of attention, it's zero one, I ain't gonna learn a thing, but anything two to 10, so long as you play the game right, once you've got my attention, if you do the right steps, boom, I'm gonna remember what you're doing. Well, I think that's such a valid point because there's so many ads today that are focusing majority of the energy, just trying to get attention. And they're really forgetting the essence of, of what memories are you trying to form or, or what are you really trying to influence and persuade the consumer? So again, like this is why I love this ad. It hasn't tried to go out and get a huge amount of attention. It's really focusing on its, its core value proposition. And it's yeah. also got a nice little intrigue statement that, that also pulls you in. It leverages a trusted advisor strategy, Greg Combet. I hope that's how you say his name. But Greg is the chairman of Industry Super. He comes across really genuine. He's trustworthy. Yeah. He's relatable. You know, I was going to say that was a good move on their part. That bringing it's very clear he's not an actor. It's very clear he wasn't hired for his acting skills. But because he was just a normal dude talking to camera, and you're like, all right, if you're giving me the message, this is good stuff. And lo and behold, you like the guy at the end of that. Hundred percent. And for me, that's the mammalian brain. Like that's a herd animal going. Do I trust these sorts of information? Does it feel real and genuine? And yeah. that's a massive tick for me. Like, I really love that choice and agree with you. Um, and it runs a subtle promise proof. Sorry, Jared, you go. No, what I'm thinking too, if you bring it back, I think the timing of it, that was one of the best parts of this ad is you bring this guy out in the middle of a normal day and chances are people are going to go, oh, who cares? It's silly. Who knows? But during this COVID period, when we're really really sensitive to relationships and am I being lied to? Am I being, and we're really, um, I don't want to say uncertain and I don't want to say cynical, but news coming at us, we're not taking it as seriously anymore. We have our walls up. And for this guy to then come out during this time, break through those walls, that was just like a perfect bit of timing on their part. You couldn't have reached Australians at a better moment to say, hey, we're normal, we're natural, you can believe in us, you can trust us, boom. Well, oh, good point. I remember it was probably about three or four years ago and we we're running, we had this DRTV creative and we had this particular actor and he was brilliant. We we're getting great results. He was talking through the entire brand and product and solution and it was working for us. Um, but the brand actually forgot to renew his contract or, or forward out. 
and another brand had hijacked him and stolen him. So we had to find a new talent in a really short amount of time. And we weren't driving the project the brand was at the time. They got this other guy that they felt could do a similar job. We ran exactly the same script, same everything in essence, different guy. Results dropped by 70% oh. just because it was a different talent that didn't feel genuine to the brand. Like again, this yeah. the mammalian, the herd animal was just, no, I don't trust it. It doesn't feel authentic. Hence, I can't connect. So, and you've yeah, got a loyalty issue too, is remember when the um, uh, Travago girl, when they changed her out, is whoever they brought in, I don't even know if they brought in anyone, but people got mad because it, was, it became a loyalty thing. It was like, no, no, I put my faith in that woman. When I think of your commercials, I think of her. If you take her out, I don't know what you're doing anymore. I'm out too. So you've, when you use a trusted advisor, you, it's a knife's edge. Once you got a good one, you got to stick with that. Totally. And, and yeah, I think Greg is absolutely brilliant in this role. Um, the other thing, just before I cut to you, Jared, is yeah. it runs a really subtle but nice promise proof structure. Like it's promising, you know, 200,000 jobs, you know, and it's demonstrating all the jobs that it's previously been in. It just builds and builds and builds. And as a result, like during the ad, you the brand, it feels big. It feels safe. It feels good for Australians, good for your super. Like it's got mass appeal and, and even the tagline, you know, we're all in it together. You know, it, yeah. it just really brings it all, all together in, in that essence. And um, yeah, and just to reiterate, the, the thing that I completely love about this is they know their long-term branded assets and they continue to invest them. Just like McDonald's doesn't change its golden arches, Nike doesn't change its tick. They know their branded assets. They continue to remind and refresh them. Look, it's simple, it's effective, and it didn't break the bank. What are your thoughts, Dr. Jared? To, I totally agree 100%. And if you just take a pure learning aspect from this, this is another, so we were talking about how perfectly timed it was for them to bring in this spokes guy during Corona. Boom, nailed that one perfectly, sweet. They actually made an, another move, and I don't know if they intended to do this, which was, again, perfectly timed. Their whole ads up until now, for at least what I can remember, are people in jobs showing you the, the symbol. And that's yeah, cool, little, but you, yeah, they're a little hand thing. And that's cool, but you really quickly forget that the purpose of, especially superannuation, is to invest in large projects. The jobs are definitely a part of it, but it's the projects themselves that give back to all of us. So I'm not the one in need of a job, but this project you're building is actually giving back to me, A, in my super, B, in the fact that now I have a social place to interact with other people. That message has gotten really kind of lost in the last couple of years. And that's largely because people understand what superannuation is, so they don't have to keep telling you what it is. But every once in a while, you need to remind people, look at what we're actually doing. We're building new runways at your airport so you can travel easier. We're building new railways in Perth so you can have a more luxury cruise wherever the heck you're going. It was this perfect reminder of super isn't just cute people with jobs, having a good time, laughing with some music behind them. These are real projects. These are real things that are making Australia big. And these are real things that we're investing your money in. So be a part of it. And I just thought, now, the reason I call it perfectly timed is if you don't know what super is, if you didn't have a background in it, you'd see this ad and you'd still have no idea what superannuation is. It didn't teach you what it was. It didn't take you back to the basics. So it requires enough prior knowledge in your viewers to be able to draw the link to say, oh yeah, I remember that's what superannuation is. It's not just that song about being in this together. And I just, so if they would have done this when the superannuation was brand new or if they were a new company, probably wouldn't have worked. But the fact that they've had the last couple of years sowing the seeds, we all know the facts, we all know the details. Now when you change gears, we have enough knowledge coming in that we can link it together, form our new memory and say, now I get what you're trying to do. And I just thought that was honest to God, as an, as an outsider who never thinks about super and turns those commercials off, this was the first time I watched a commercial and said, damn, that's important. Thank you for showing me what my money is actually doing, not just making silly commercials. And it was so timely and necessary. Look, I think in terms of the layering of, uh, you know, when you're launching a brand and you're thinking about what are our long-term branded assets going to be and yeah. what the timeline looks like. This wouldn't have been a great ad if they were launching it. But the fact that they've got the music bed, 
the fact that they've got the jingle, we're all in together. They've got the icon and the hand symbol that they continue to remind and refresh. You don't need to go into that anymore because you're just looping back on the memories that have already been formed. You know, so it's a continuation of the narrative. It's not establishing the foundation to, to leverage from. So I think that is going to be an interesting point, which I'm, I'm, I'm actually really keen to pick up on the next little section. But yeah, I think a really valid point. And what you said, I know what's, what's coming up next. So you were talking earlier too about how do you use attention to build memory? I think that, that is essentially the basis of our compare the pair this week. Uh, at least that's what I got from it. Looking at those two, that's all I was thinking about was, great, you got, it, you got attention. What the hell are you going to do with it now? And only one of the pair does something with it. But look, I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to put that out there as a teaser. Look, look, let's jump straight into it because there's, there's compare the pair at the moment, which is interesting because we're just jumping straight off industry super and um, not necessarily their tagline. But compare the pair, we've got BCF and we've got barbecues galore. First, let's cut to BCF. Nothing beats a bit of boating on a glassy lake. Unless, of course, your boat is 36 years out of date. And nothing beats a hammock strung up in a shady place. Unless you shake a possum down that bites you on your face. Nothing beats a weekend fishing with your family. Unless instead of fish you catch some guy on a jet ski. So if you're heading outdoors and don't know what to do Our BCF and experts can make you an expert too Cause boat and cat and fishing should be BCF and BCF and BCF and BCF and fun BCF and fun Hey! This is it, Ray, the company Barbie. Jane will give you that promotion if you give her this perfectly cooked steak. Don't be too quick on the draw, mate. You've got this, Ray. Use your barbecues galore skills. I'm ready. Yeah, get over there, hombre, and become the Deputy Vice Assistant Regional Manager you were born to be. I'm vegan. Oh, it's okay, Ray. More epic steak for you. Legend! Barbecues galore. Now you're cooking. Love this compare the pair because you couldn't get two of the exact same, like they're the same commercial. It's just, so let's, let's coming in. It's a pure attention grabber. That's what these commercials are meant to do. They're meant to grab your attention. They're meant to surprise you. They're meant to tickle your fancy. Ha, we're having a good old time. whoop de doo Only one of these commercials then says, now that I got your attention, I'd better build something real with that memory. And I'm guessing everyone out there can figure out which one it is. BCF is the only one that actually built a memory of something that concerned their brand. Whereas the barbecues galore, I kid you not, I've watched that thing about four times now. I can't find a barbecue in the whole damn thing. I see a steak. I see a dude. I see some really weird coloring. And the only time you ever see the barbecue, by the way, it is because of the, the, color palette they used for the ad like that 60s kind of weird vibe stuff the barbecue blends in way too well with every other thing around it because they're all stark colors that you don't even see the damn thing if you're gonna grab my attention good if you're gonna be silly fine be silly but be silly with your brand bcf said their name i think something like 12 12 times i counted in the first version of that 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 ad. They also said the word that doesn't include how many times they said the word fishing, boats and camping. So that's in addition to all of this, every joke was about their brand. Every comedy moment was one step closer to what they actually do. The comedy, the attention was funneling me right into their brand, what they wanted me to remember. And so I will, I will remember their seems theme song, which has their name in it. That's like having, I can't imagine how many places have theme songs that I can remember, but that don't have the name of the store in it. So who cares? It's just like remembering a pop song. It's useless. They got their name in it. 
all the comedy makes me go, hey, that's a camping joke. That's a fishing joke. Yay. Whereas the barbecues galore one, the joke was about a guy getting a job. The joke wasn't even about a barbecue. The barbecue was a secondary, that was like a bit player in the joke. Why would you waste your time and money on this? I can't, like, I, that's one of those rare commercials that I watch and I just go, well, I guess maybe they're getting less and less rare, but I just go, how the hell did that ever make it past the table without somebody saying, wait, what are we here to do? Are we here to make somebody giggle? Or are we here to promote a company, a business to drum up customers? If the former, great, you did great. But I can't believe no one stood up and said, that's not what we're here to do. So on to the yeah. next idea, please. Look, I think fascinating because I was 100% with you. Um, I'll dig into a bit more detail and, and flesh out because there, there's a bit of a structure to there that I thought was interesting as well. Again, mm-hmm. BCF absolutely crushed that. And for me, this very much forms in brand. But then both of them are retailers. So with retail, they'll also have sales, promotion. That They'll want to discount and have promotional messaging moving forward. So you need to build that base. So for me, both of these creators were trying to build that base and then they could leverage moving forward. So BCF, I'm going to break it down. You've got acoustic encoding. So that's the song that's all the way through. Again, boating, camping, fishing. The visuals, it's a mixture of storytelling and prediction break humor. And the one thing I loved about the execution was it's very relatable as in like as a dad now myself, like it feels like we've all got a little bit of that character inside of us. So again, we can connect with it. So it feels somewhat native to us, you know, as much as we don't want to admit it, we've got a little bit of that goofy character, especially with our kids and sons and camping. Um, so the, the entire creative was designed to do one thing. It was to set up the problem in an entertaining way and embed the jingle. So, and more so the tagline into our memories. So it was setting up the problem, the jingle and the tagline. So the problem is solved right at the end. You know, and this is where the host of the long-term branded assets come into play. And that feels like a bit of a theme at the moment, the long-term branded assets. So the tagline is genius. It's BCF and fun. You know, you can play around with that all day long. And again, it's a little bit cheeky. It plays to the brand and exactly what they're trying to elicit and, and the storyline. They've just gone. But if you look at the timing when they drop BCF in fun, it's right at the hero shot of this fabulous blue and orange retail with big logo and that's their location. And they're continuing on with the humor with a slight prediction break with the wheel falling off the 1984 um, Ford Falcon Mustang. That's a mustard color, you know? So like right where, where it really matters, they've got several things going on with deep memory formation. So that's kind of what you want. They're the pillars that we're going to be leveraging moving forward that we're going to remind and refresh. So look, the, the brand ad, you know, if you want to call it that, Um, It sets up a very likable uh, situation. It sets up the problem and and this problem can then be solved for hard hitting retail sales, promotional messaging moving forward. You know, so for me, they've done it brilliantly. I love the quirky characters. You know, the retail imagery is brilliant. They've got this really nice looking sort of presentable um, BCF staff member, you know, that they've just rolled in from this horrible camping trip that she's going to solve all of their problems. So it's a safe place, like a really lovely brand piece, but really, really powerful. Flip to barbecues galore. The ads seem far less relatable. You know, my mammalian brain goes, I can't connect these on any level. And I'm not sure if it was just the horrible shirts or the sort of the 60 years tire. What's Sorry, interesting, Jeff. if you break it down, no, do what exi- literally everything you just said about the BCF commercial, you could throw on to here. It had... A narrative. There was a story building up. There was a hero shot. There was the moment when it all resolved. It was the exact same commercial, but exactly as you were saying, from the get-go, it was just like, what are we doing here? Uh, look, yeah, totally agree. You know, so you got the characters that are less relatable. So the execution was slightly off. So it, it felt like they had this idea, you know, this is a situation that could be relatable. You know, trying to be funny, they've got a bit of a vegan joke in there, like you know, they've, they've definitely tried to go down a very similar path, but then from a brand and like, they don't have acoustic encoding. So you can't use that moving forward. Like my real question to them is what are the long-term branded assets that you're going to be leveraging moving forward when you are looking to have a retail, a promotion, a sale, something 
that's that's going to be harder hitting. Like, what are you going to try and carry over? The only thing I could think of is potentially the character, but the character for me is more repulsive than it is bring you in. Like, a, again, they, they've they've really missed the boat on this. Um, and the only thing they've got is sort of the logo that's slapped at the end, which is more of an afterthought rather than a strategic way of how do we seed our brand all the way through. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, unlike BCF, uh, that has a, a great and very memorable tagline and music bed that they can leverage moving forward, these guys simply don't. There's, there's nothing unique about this ad. And what do you really remember after it? And it's certainly not the brand. So, and I think if, if, a good point of call is, is if you're going to have the luckless loser in one of your ads. So both of these featured the idiot. The idiot has to be likable. And this is the, the point is it has to somehow take the piss of the viewer. So just like you said, you can recognize it in yourself, but you're rooting for the guy because you're rooting for yourself. Yes, I've been an idiot, but ah, once you start rooting for the character, then, and I will go a little neurological, you get your flow of what's called oxytocin, which makes you, oxytocin is essentially, we'll just call it to be simple, the, the bonding chemical. So it typically is released when you're breastfeeding, when you're making love, when you're involved in a very good story, or when you're in a very deep relationship. It comes out in these fast moments too. When I start rooting for this idiot, I genuinely want him to win. It is a chemical reaction in my body for this guy to do well. If I don't like the idiot, A, not only will I not get my oxytocin, no bonding, but B, I'm actively going to start rooting against him. I'm going to say, dude, that guy doesn't deserve to win. If you don't even know what your boss eats, you don't deserve a job. You're a loser. Now that I've just called this guy a loser, and the last thing I see is going to be your brand. Is that really the, the final connection you want me to have? So I, it, it's very, I want to say current, like 21st century to use idiots in ads. I think we've always had the comedy, but it seems to be more prevalent now to say, we're not cool, we're silly, we're, but it's such a dangerous road because if you make a character that's just not relatable or likable, you, there's no turning back. You, you've made a huge mistake. Look, it goes back to the, the other thing that we've got, which is casting, you know, getting the right cast is, is vital to success. You can have great yeah. idea, great script, but if you don't cast it well, you know, it can fall on its face pretty quick. I think um, there's all those Saturday Night Live did those things where they had different characters or different actors auditioning for characters from like Star Wars and, and uh, Back to the Future and things like that. And that just shows you how important, even if you're just having a... a a different actor, even as it's a good actor, reading a line that they shouldn't be reading. We know it's wrong. It feels wrong. And that's kind of the joke that they're, they're pulling on you. You need to be perfect in how you're making these people. And talk of uh, acting and talent, we'll move to the classic creative, which is the one, the only, Solo Man. It's time for a blast from the past. When you're training hard for the triathlon, you work up a real solo thirst. Extra tangy lemon solo crushes a man-sized thirst. And in this tough competition, the only place for a solo man to be is first. And when you've got a thirst for it, you've got to crack a solo! Solo lemon, it's light on fizz for when you're long on thirst. So crack a solo and be a solo man. Solo, light on the fizz so you can slam it down fast. Solo Lemon, the thirst crusher. So, Dr. Jared, you probably are very familiar with these creatives. Would that these be These were before my time here. Before but what, let, me, let me get your take. So, you grew up with these. So, yeah, I was, I was just a wee lad when these were kicking around. No, I was in my, you know, nearly early teens for the, for the latter end of this. So, you know, I understand my, it was really in my brother and, and dad's. So look, again, quite very familiar. And I, I remember 
like when I was digging through these, I really remember seeing these ads on TV. Like as soon as I'm like, I know exactly what this is. So yeah, Solo yeah. Man, just to give you a bit of uh, history, Solo Man was created in the 80s and early 90s. And that was this character. So if we're looking at a memorable character, that's what they were trying to do. And they were really trying to tap into the subculture and the identity at the time, which is really strong, was this sort of iconic Australian masculine character. You know, it was also the time of, you know, Crocodile Dundee. So yeah. this flavor, like VB, if you're looking at another brand that tapped into it incredibly well, VB, you know, they owned this identity from a beer perspective with masculine Aussies. And Solo Man was really trying to do exactly the same thing, but for the soft drink market. So if you're looking at it, like Solo's trying to make a soft drink hard for, for tough Aussie males. So you can slam it down fast. So it's, it's interesting, but it, it worked and it worked incredibly well. So, I, I loved it. If, 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 as a newcomer to this, what I, I think from an ad perspective, the thing that makes this so good is they know exactly who they're targeting. And, and that's, yeah. I think a, a good port of call is if you're advertising for everyone, you're advertising for no one. You have to have a crew. And so they took a shot. They said, you know what? We're going to go just for that hard bloke. We're going to take a drink that they probably shouldn't drink and we're going to try and hit them with it and let's, let's see if it works. And women, be damned. Soft blokes, be damned. This is for this. But the joke is, is by making it so specific to them, everyone knows what you're doing so no one feels put out by it. There's not going to be a woman who's like, well, I guess that's not my drink or a soft bloke who's like, guess not for me. No, we're all going to be a part of it. You've just made it clear that this is kind of your identity. This is what you want to do. Go to town. Well, this is interesting because there's also several case studies on this exact same strategy. You know, there, there's um, a, a chocolate bar in the UK that was aimed at, you know, the hard truck driving males. But if you're yeah. looking at who's actually buying this product, it drastically over-indexed for females. And I can remember at like family lunches with big gatherings where there's 50, 60 years. I remember like my aunties and, and females were drinking more solo than when not the males were. Like, so yeah. for me, it's very interesting. They knew their cohort and they owned them and they connected with them, but they also spoke to the wider, the, the wider group as well. Like, but yeah, in terms of the, the execution, like really basic stuff, but just getting it right. Like yellow is definitely their hero theme. Got the yellow in the kayak, the yellow paddles, the yellow bird. And then if you're looking at product preference, like they've got this hero shot with this beautiful, fresh looking can that's <laughs> dripping with ice cold condensation. And like if you're mildly thirsty, like your saliva glands are getting going as a result of watching it. And you've got this crisp, like the, psh, like as the can's opening, like it's, it's absolutely sensational. Like, and I'll be and, honest with you. I've been here for 10 years. I know of solo, never had one after watching that. I wanted one. It was like the first time I felt like <laughs> now I know what you do. Okay. Let's give it a whirl. Come on. Give me a shot. I don't know if I but, like it, but at least now I have a reason to say I'm trying it for this reason. Let's go. And the underlying promise within that, which is consistent throughout their solo man execution, and this is everyone from like nearly an Iron Man in a singlet through to the guy that's diving off the cliff in his kayak. But the promise of the brand, you know, why, why, what's so great about solo? They just reinforce it. Light on fizz so you can slam it down fast. Again, they're just reminding and that's what it is. And that's what he's literally sculling a can of soft drink, which is virtually impossible to do with, with many other brands. So look, again, brilliant, creative, great execution, build a, build a very large brand in this country as a result and a memorable character, you know, the solo man identity, like it's, it's there. I think I want to go down. I think this real quick, just want to hit on this because I'm thinking about this now. Why would it be that if you target the hard Aussie bloke, you get more female drinkers? What, what the heck just happened? And I'm, what I'm thinking is, is in order for us to form a memory for something, we have to have a place to anchor it. So all of the memories, all of our understanding in our brain comes in, um, it comes in clean, but then we have to tie it to what we call schemata. So if you have a free floating fact in your brain, it's unrecallable, it's useless, it's dead. Only when that fact gets locked down into a larger schemata and goes, oh, this is where this belongs, that's when it becomes usable knowledge for you. So if an advertisement is generic and just say, this is good, this is great. I got literally nowhere to put it. It just floats in my head. And I'm like, is it, or is it a, is it a, this product? Is it an up product? Is it down? Is it round? Is it, I don't know what's going on. But once you target somebody, 
then at least, even if it's not me, I have a schemata to put it in. I can say, okay, the hard Aussie bloke, I know that guy drinking a soda. Okay, cool. Boom. Now I, I have a spot for that memory. And now even that I'm a woman, now I can make the judgments by myself. I don't have to be part of that schemata to understand it. But now that I have it categorized, I can say, yeah, I support that. Let's go. Or no, I don't like that. Or, hey, I find those people kind of funny. Let's give it a whirl over here. The ability to tie it down is what allows me to use it in whatever way I want to use it. But if you just leave it vacuous, if you leave it ethereal, then no one can do anything with it. It's just noise. Such an interesting point because you'd also go that when this brand was growing, it owned a certain psychographic demographic, someone that that's my identity and I want that identity. So I'm going to use that product. Yeah. So you've got males call it masculine Aussies using this product, but then you've also got wives, daughters, sons watching masculine dad drink this product. And now they're like, Oh, I've got social proof. It's validated. This should be a product. I'm going to sample some. Wow. This is a great product. I'm going to start buying it. So you've got initial traction from the ad campaign. You've got an audience that then start to use the product. Then you've got the social validation. People see people using really interesting. I'll just go there real quick. A car brand. There's a really smart guy I used to work with and he knew the auto industry better than anyone. He knew that you needed a minimum 500 cars on the road in a certain city so you'd have social proof that other people were driving this vehicle. So literally, as soon as he got a new product in, he just wanted them on the road so everyone could see them on the road. So they then go, oh, wow, I'm seeing that everywhere. So that becomes the social proof that, wow, I trust this brand. I need a sample it. I'm going to try it. So again, it's understanding the role of this piece of communication in the wider sales journey. Of all the throwbacks we've done so far, Solo Man is the one that I think could come back now and actually help the brand. Because as a, as a newcomer to Australia, I know it exists. I don't know what it does. I've never tried it. I have no interest in it. It's not a big brand. It's, it's around, but who cares? This is something that it's, an, it's cool enough that you could bring it back almost ironically and it would work. Uh, I wouldn't look at it and be like, ooh, that's like, our, we looked at the Aussie man in the, um, what was the ad we saw last week where the guy opened the bottle with a, the beak of a bird? Oh, pure, pure blonde. Pure blonde. Like, I, I think that was a little too far that you couldn't bring it back now without some clash. This is just on that edge where if you bring it back, people know you're being ironic. It would be funny. People would remember it. New people like me would say, all right, I got you. I'm with you. And it would work. So I, I think of, of all the throwbacks, this is the one that if they decided we're bringing back Solo Man, I wouldn't be surprised if it was successful. Do you think the challenge would be, though, that the masculine Aussie, the identity of that is nowhere near as strong now? No, but that's what makes it so wonderfully ironic is they, they, if they come at it like true, where like now instead of a dude surfing down a half, a half pipe with a python, if they try and make it real where it's like, of what's a new Aussie block? Like, what do we do now? Like, I don't know, play vid football? I don't know. If they try and make it now, it probably wouldn't work. But if they keep it as gross and silly and campy as they did in the 80s with a clear set and like some dude doing something he shouldn't be doing, like I'm going to kayak off this bridge, sweet. Chances are we'll be like, I remember that cute nostalgia kicks in. People like yeah. me will go, that's pretty funny. So long as we know you're kind of taking the piss, I think it would still work. Yeah. Interesting. Love it. Hopefully we do get to see the solo man back. Cause I, I do love the solo man. There's a lot of people who got a, a fond memory of the solo man. So hopefully. Well, if you watch footy, all the players are bringing the mullet back. It's becoming, it's not like, we know it's not real. We know you're being ironic, but because of that, I'm on your side. Nice mullet. So if you bring back solo man with like that sweet mo and the singlet that no one's worn for 20 years, I have a feeling we're all going to be on your side and be like, I remember the good old days. That's cute. That's funny. Can, Let's go. You can nearly do that. An execution of either AFL or NRA footballers. Get them in. Got the mallets. They've got, you know, the, the 80s look going. <laughs> Don't even have to change a thing. They're new solo men. The new version of the solo man Just is exactly the same as the old version. Love it. Love it. Well, that's a wrap for episode five. Dr. Jared, thank you so much. Just to thank reiterate. You. Understand and know what your long-term branded assets are and continue to remind and refresh those memory structures in consumers' mind because that is your power. Over and out for now. Until next episode, 
Speak soon. See you guys.